In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. So grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You give them something to eat. It might have seemed like it was a pretty difficult day to be one of Jesus' disciples there on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, looking at thousands and hearing Jesus say, you guys give them something to eat. A difficult day to, to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus, one who would serve Jesus and by serving Jesus would, would be called on to serve others. You give them something to eat. You remember where we are. Jesus had sent his disciples out on their first missionary journey. They had come back to him and reported with joy all the things that they saw and did and said. It was so busy, the crowds were so great, they, they didn't even have time or room to eat. So they, so they head out to this remote place, a place that Jesus said, we can get some rest. You can be with me. The other side of the Sea of Galilee, but the people followed. People ran, got there ahead of them. Thousands of people, 5,000 men ate, not to, to even number the rest. Probably 10, 12,000 people were able to, to be there. When, when Jesus stepped off the boat at this place that they were trying to get to, a remote place to get some rest, Jesus looked up and the final words just before our gospel reading this morning, we read them last week, Jesus looked up and his heart broke. His heart broke open in compassion because, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And so the Lord, the one who breaks the darkness, shed light, served as a shepherd, the last thing that Mark tells us is that he began to teach them many things. All that they would need to know for life and for salvation. The other gospel writers tell us that Jesus, he, he healed and he taught on this day. But as this, this day of great compassion and healing and teaching was coming to a close, it is as if the disciples suddenly realized we might have a problem on our hands here, Jesus. There are thousands of people here. Send them away. We can have a riot on our hands. But it's not as though Jesus didn't know what was going on and, and suddenly this problem popped up that he was unaware of. The other gospel writers help us to understand a little bit better. The other gospel writers tell us Jesus knew what was going on from the very start. In John in his gospels, he says, when they got off the boat and looked up and he saw and his heart broke up with compassion, he took a moment to talk to Philip. And I always picture it as it's one of my favorite stories. He, he, it's almost like he puts his arm around Philip's shoulder and he looks at Philip and he looks at all these people and says, Philip, uh, where do you think we're getting enough bread for all these people to eat? The disciples did some quick back-of-the-envelope type of math and they reasoned that it would take anywhere from eight, six to eight months of a, a working man's wages just to buy enough for everybody to have a, a single morsel to eat. Maybe it seemed like a difficult time to be a disciple when Jesus said, you give them something to eat. Maybe it seemed like a difficult time to follow Jesus and to serve him. We're in the midst of this uh, series of Sundays with this theme that runs through these Sunday morning readings that remind us that, that our God, our Heavenly Father, has called each and every one of us as His children, He's called us to serve. Called us to, to meaning, meaningful service, meaningful ministry. To serve others with, with love and humility and compassion and to reflect our Savior's love. To share his message of salvation with others. With, with the people that, that our Lord brings into contact with us in our lives. And maybe you're tempted to think, because I think like this once in a while. 
man, I'm not qualified for all of that. I, I don't have everything that's necessary. My resources are limited. Maybe, maybe you're tempted to think that the, the task is just so daunting. This service, this ministry that God has called you to in your own life. Especially when you look around and you see how many people, needy people there are. And I don't just mean somebody by the side of the road with a sign. There are needy all around us. People who need you and who you are and what you can share. It can be difficult when we look around and take stock of all those who are needy around us and hear Jesus say, proverbially, you give them something to eat. For the disciples, it, they got to, to see a miracle. And it's, it's easy for you and for me to just sit back for a moment and to marvel at the power and the love that Jesus shows. This the one who created all things, who, who calls all things to existence at the time of creation, he steps back for a moment and he defies the very laws of, of science and nature and physics and the universe that he himself created. And he, it's like he creates new matter itself. We marvel at this amazing love and the power of Jesus' providence to take a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish and from that produce food that feeds thousands. It's right for us to marvel at a miracle like that and, and to rejoice that this is the Savior that we have who has such power and love that when there doesn't seem to be enough, he always makes sure that there is, and he always provides an abundance. This is the kind of Savior we have. It's right to marvel at that. It's right to teach that in Sunday school and to rejoice in it. But we can dig a little bit deeper than that, too. We, we, we dare not miss and bypass these important words. Mark says, taking the five loaves and the two fish, Looking up to heaven, he gave thanks. He recognizes the one from whom all these blessings flow. But then, the, the scene almost seems like a throwaway line. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. You give them something to eat, Jesus had told them. And then Jesus doesn't leave them empty-handed to serve and to minister. He provides everything that they are going to need and, and even more in abundance. So much that's left over. You give them something to eat, Jesus told them. He tells us, and the same is true for, for us as well. He has provided you with all that you need to serve wherever you are, those that are around you. He has blessed you, maybe miraculously, but probably by ordinary means. He's given you gifts and abilities, things that you've developed over time, things that you've learned, talents that you have, things that nobody else can do that are around you. He's given you skills. He's given you wisdom and wealth. He's given you time. He gives you opportunities. He gives you a heart and faith to believe his promises and to treasure his word. Above all, Jesus gives you and me himself as this sacrifice on the cross so that we might know our sins have been forgiven because he died to pay that price. He gives us a promise that we're going to live forever even in this, this dying world can't take that away from us because he rose from the dead so we don't need to fear death and neither do any of those that cling to faith in him. We've got a promise. He gives it to us in his word again and again that we're not alone, no matter how scary or violent or treacherous this world may seem. He's promised that he's with us always. All of these things are from him. In fact, we, we understand this from the scriptures and 
And when we're honest with ourselves, everything that we are and everything that we have, all of the stuff comes from him. Everything that you are, everything that you have has come from him. There's nothing that's left out. And we understand that when our God provides and gives like this, he provides in abundance, not just, not just the bare minimum of what we need to survive. He provides so much more than we could ever possibly use just for ourselves. Like those disciples carrying around enough food to feed thousands. God meets our needs so that we can meet the needs of others. You see, did you hear how, how the Apostle Paul captured that so beautifully? In, in this word of encouragement that he's writing to these Corinthian Christians for the, for the offering that's being gathered for, for poor people back in Jerusalem during a famine. But he's not just referring to, to monetary gifts. He's referring to all that these people are and all that they're doing and giving for the glory of God. He says this, God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. So my challenge to you is this. Look around you. When you get to work, when you get back to school, when you get home and look over the fence, you go to the grocery store, and you look across the dinner table. Look around you, and you will see someone in need. Someone who needs your time. Nothing special, just your attention. Someone who might need just your skill set, the things that God has blessed you with. Someone who needs your kindness, an encouraging word. You may see somebody who needs your financial hope and security to be shared with them. You'll see someone who needs you to serve them with all that God has blessed you with. You'll see those who need your witness of who Jesus is and what he has done for you. You'll see those who need you to serve them with all that God has blessed you with so that, as Paul says, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. For your Savior has called you to serve. And he says, you give them something to eat. You give them from what I've given you, the abundance that I have blessed you with. Aiden, today you begin your ministry in a new place. And it's becoming obvious to, to most all of us that your Savior has blessed you with tremendous abilities and gifts. He has blessed you with a, a, a church body that has provided for your, your education and your training. He's surrounded you with uh, the love and the support and the stability of this, this wonderful family that joins you today. He's placed you uh, amongst a faculty and staff um, full of extremely talented and generous and humble people who can benefit from your service and who can be an example to you. He's called you to a congregation that will, that will pray for you and support you, that will rejoice and celebrate with you in times of happiness and that is going to, to weep and mourn with you in times of sadness too. And this Savior who gave himself for you now gives you this opportunity to use all that he's given you and all that you are to serve him. To serve students and families that come from such a diverse group of backgrounds and origins that the only thing they may have really in common is the Savior who died for them, whom you will share with them each and every day. So feed them with everything that Jesus has given you. 
everything that he's made you to be, and it will result in thanksgiving to God. And we again pray, Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the peace of God which